I am one of the only certified instructors uh, teaching at the moment to the public. Uh, the inventor's still teaching, but he's only doing dealerships at the moment. Okay. Um, he gives all the public students to me. Uh, now, you said you were located in Bakersfield. Bakersfield, California. Uh, hopefully, I might be relocating, but at the moment, we're in Bakersfield. Okay. Now, let me take a peek at a couple of these engines. So, you, you basically, students bring these in, and, and you teach them how to convert these to the heat process. Yes, I've had people bring in generators. I've had them bring in air compressors. Um, I have done a SR, SR5 1989 four-cylinder pickup. Um, here are the pickers for that one. Um, I just let them bring them in and we convert them from scratch. First we teach the theory, why it works, and what we know so far because there's only so much that we learned about it. Uh, other than that, they won't allow us to put a bunch of stuff in books yet. So. Well, now with, from your experiences then, how, how did the Geet engines perform compared to a conventional engine? Oh, they perform much smoother. You got much different RP you, you can go as low as, I've gone down to 100 RPMs per minute and not have you know anything of any crazy vibrations i've gone up to this motor right here is rated to only go 3000 rpms we've gotten up to 7000 rpms without blowing it and that's just a looks like a lawnmower engine this right? is a three horsepower briggs and stratton okay so so a lot of this then just depends it's just because of the heat process it, it makes it burn cleaner or well, what it does is it transmutes the elements to an elemental gas so that then it could burn in cleanly, but also clean your motors up. Oh, kind of a plasma reaction. Exactly. They've said that it, it comes out as a plasma state because it does not condense back into anything. Oh, okay. It, it stays in the plasma. You can actually trap the plasma gas. So this would lower emissions probably as well. You get, we have, we guarantee a minimum of 80% reduction in emissions. Wow. But there are closed loop systems where you have self-sustaining and zero emissions. Now, if I remember right, it's been a while since I looked into Geet, but you have the bubbler over here. And, and one of the things that I liked about the system was in the demonstrations I've seen in the past, they've mixed gasoline and water. Yes. And and it'll it'll actually filter that out. Can, can you tell me a little bit about that, how it could run on different fuels? Okay, <laughs> well for demonstration purposes, and I'll be showing this this weekend, is we set up our bubbler so that, and it's glass so you could see what we put in there. We set up a mixture of 20% gasoline and 80% mixture of soda pop, urine, uh, coffee, some people use hot sauce, uh, many multiple things, it all depends on how you tune your rod. This is a very crucial part to the fuels that you want to run. And this is just simply the bubber that will vaporize the fuel. Okay. So there's a vacuum in here, a constant vacuum that will vaporize the fuel or help vaporize the fuel along with the vortex that's being created with the spot with the vacuum. And that's how you get that's how you mix up your different liquids. So this this might have advantages then also in, in developing nations, right? Where maybe the gas oh, isn't yes. clean or... At the moment, we have, I am part of a co-op that's gonna be going down to Costa Rica and we're gonna be helping them and teaching their school how to run this. Because their goal is to go green by 2021 and they don't have no natural resources. So I don't think we should run into much resistance. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let me ask you about let me ask you about this this engine. This is uh, now this is one of the training engines, right? This is one of the stu this is one of my students' motors. Uh, he built it, and we, he got it to run on 50% gas and 50%, um, for lack of a better word, let's say <laughs> coffee. <laughs> let's say coffee. Um, and he's he let me borrow it for the convention. And as you can see, we got a sight glass in here so you can see what the rod does when you turn it on. Oh, I see, I see. Now, obviously, we don't want to run it in the hotel, oh, but, no, but yeah. Right now. Um, okay, so the fuel comes out of the bubbler and it's vaporized, goes through the tube. Now, this is this is the reactor, as I recall. This is the reactor. This is the, re oh, this pipe. This is a the pipe within a pipe right here. Oh, you have your okay. exhaust. Then you have your reactor pipe. And inside of the reactor pipe is where your reactor rod is. And so this the, the is rod simply slides the cooling coil. Right down in here. The rod 
the rod is sitting right about here right now. But when you start the motor, the rod will actually levitate and spin where it wants to be. Okay. So you got to build the reactor to the proper size to let the rod find its home. Oh, okay. Okay. So it kind of sets itself. And it, yes. It has a it has a mind of its own almost. So well, it finds the resonance of whatever material that you're building. Exactly. The, the gas. Well, you whatever gotta whatever help it find. Depending on, you gotta know what you're gonna be running first. All right. So then you can build your reactor because there's different lengths and different setups. You can right. go horizontal. So you can't change the materials after you build it. There it, yes you can, but your efficiency won't be as great as it could be when it's properly tuned. Let's say this one, it's set up where I could just replace the rod and run a different fuel, but my efficiency won't be as great. It'll well, still be good, but it won't be as you know, great. What kind of fuels do you typically run with it, or, or can you run with I've it? I've run crude gas pulled straight out of the ground, crude oil. I've gotten a gas motor to run on diesel with almost no pollution. Um, no, and no kind of misfires or anything like that. Uh, typically what I'm gonna be setting up for is crude oil because I got a lot of connections for crude oil. But that would be for me. As far as my students, well, they can come and they tell me what they wanna run on. Yeah, now, and, and the, typically with diesel, like your spark plugs wouldn't ignite that, but in this case, since exactly. it's vaporizing, it, it's probably just the heat in the reaction chamber, well, it's right? It's no longer diesel when it comes out here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, whatever, it's you, whatever you put in here comes out completely different molecular structure. And it's basically what they've been recorded is when you run crude oil, they've gotten helium, oxygen, hydrogen, and many other or different kinds of... Uh, just all sorts of constituents. Just elemental gases, actually. Yeah. So, then you bring them over here and they, they burn really good. Now, with, with converted cars and stuff, when people convert those, um, have you, have you when you drive those, how do they typically drive? Well, the one vehicle that I've converted so far has a really, really smooth idle, and it runs really good. Uh, only problem we had with it was getting the proper vaporization. That's crucial. We were actually giving it a little bit too much fuel using a three horsepower and a six horsepower lawnmower carburetor. Oh, okay. Now just okay. imagine that. I mean, you're having these small little carburetors, and that was giving it way too much fuel. So that's that's kind of the hard part right there. Interesting. Now, if people want to learn more, if they wanted to get in touch with you, how could they get in touch with you? They could go to the inventor's website, geeinternational.com, call him up, and he'll let you know where I'll be teaching, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can get one of my business cards or flyers, and it has my email and cell phone on there, and you can call me whenever you want. Great. Okay. Well, thanks again. Not a problem.